So today we are going to learn about n protein at a transformation level. So let's see you know, why we write n protein at transformation, how can we write it and how to debug also. Okay. So why we go for n protein? Before that, before going to n protein, uh, let's look into the transformation. So at transformation level, we can write routines at a different level. So routine is like an ABAP logic using either using ABAP logic or AMDP. Either two ways we can write the routines at transformation level. We can write start routine, end routine, field level routine, or expert routine. Now in today's concept, we are talking about end routine. Okay, so end routine. Uh, so before writing end routine, we must know you know where we write end routine, and uh, you know how exactly it will work when we execute the DTP. Okay, if we consider this is our transformation. This transformation is coming from one ADS4 GMED AS1 to GMED AS2. So both are ADS fours. I have one to one mapping for some of the fields, and some of the fields are not mapped. Why these are not mapped? Because there are no you know source fields available for these four columns: amount currency, net price, and document currency. So, but I at the end I want to update the data for these four columns also. So how I am going to update it? Because these are not coming from my source, so I need to derive information for these four columns. So how can I derive information for these four columns? There must be some logic, right? For example, for each column, we must know what was the logic to derive the value or to you know for this column. Uh, I from either business will provide this information. Uh, then you cannot wait. Or based upon your business logic, you can create multiple columns as per your requirement. In in our scenario, here I have four columns: amount currency, net price, and document currency. So this document currency is mapped to you know currency was linked to this net price, and zero currency was linked to this amount. So if I go to zero net price, uh, okay, not here. This um, what I am going to do now. Net price is nothing but the value of each material. Okay, and I have this net price information available in. Zero material master data. For example, not zero material, material master data. So for I have a material info object in the P table for each material. I have the corresponding price and the corresponding currency available here. So from this P table of material, I need to update. I need to fetch information for each material in this ADS4 and update the corresponding value here. We call this as a lookup functionality. It means uh, data is not coming from the source, but I want at the data is already available within our BW. Now while loading data into this ADS4, if you are fetching the information from a different target into this target, then we consider this kind of mechanism as lookup functionality. Looking into some other DS1 fetching is nothing but lookup functionality. So zero net price, I can bring data from the material master data. And what about amount and currency? This amount is nothing but the material quantity. Okay, quantity into net price is nothing but my amount value. Okay, so this is my business logic. I can say, and corresponding currency also I need to write here, whichever because I am multiplying with net price value, whichever you know currency this net price holds the same currency I need to update to my zero currency. Okay, um, so this this is my for, finally these four columns I need to update uh, by end of this transformation. This net price and document currency I can bring using read from master data also because I have material available here and I know the material master data. So by you know doing mapping like this and uh, reading you know uh, let me go to edit mode here. If you you know map material to net price and then at the uh, field level routine uh, not routine at field uh, this mapping level instead of you know writing routine we can go for uh, read master data. Using read master data, read from master data, I can assign my master data info object, and this net price is already available. You know, in my, um, I think uh, the only important point here when we when we are using read from master data is um, the technical name must match. If it is not matching, system cannot bring it. You see, price. This is price. Okay, but here I have net price, so I cannot bring it. Even though this price is available in my middle master data, the column name is not exactly matching with the column name in my middle master data. So read from master data is not possible. So only option I have is to write a routine to bring this information. Let me delete this rule. 
So now I'm going to create an end routine. So how I can how can I create an end routine? By clicking on this end routine button, you know, I can create an end routine. So while clicking it, I will get this window. Now understand this window. These are selected target fields for end routine, possible target fields. So I, I have to move each and everything to here, but it is not always mandatory to move everything to here. Whichever columns you want to use in the, you know, already one-to-one -one mapped columns, you, know, you see one-to-one -one mapped columns already added to the target. You cannot, you know, bring those to the left-hand side. But unmapped columns can be possible. Those can be possible to be on the left-hand side. And, uh, you know, um, if you are want to write routine for those fields, you need to definitely bring them to the end routine side. Okay. Now click on OK button. So this is the end routine. This is the ABAP, ABAP you know, end routine, not AMDP. So now here we need to write our end routine. So let's understand. So when you click on this end routine tick mark now, after the initial pop-up, if you click on it, basically it will come and stop at this method, method end routine. So we need to implement our logic between the method end routine and the end method in between only. So this is there is a white space. So wherever you see white space on those places, SAP giving a possibility to write code. Okay. And if I little bit scroll up, there is one white space here and there is some one more white space here and no more else on the top. And again, on the bottom also, I can see, you see, this is my method end routine and end method and bottom also, I can see one uh, white space. Okay. So total four places are there. Don't get confused. Always we must implement our logic between the method and routine bit and end method. Okay. D wherever you see white space, don't go there. It is not our place to write the code. Our implementation logic must be between these and other places on the top, whichever two white spaces are there. Those are called as global declaration part. We use them only for the declaration means to create a variable um, or to create, you know, uh, internal tables and, uh, you know, such kind of declaration part only. We use the global section. But in end routine, generally, we don't need global section at all. In start routine, we use global section. But once we come to end routine, there is no significance, you know, to use global, you know, um, sections so direct always remember between n method and n method your implementation will always exist now coming to the writing code so what i am going to write before starting writing code i need to uh, i need my you know business logic as expressed earlier so here my target is to derive four columns information one is net price and the amount and the corresponding document currency and amount and the corresponding currency these four fields i need to derive Okay, so we need to understand again some more thing. Let me save it. I am not writing anything, just I am saving my end routine. So you see pencil symbol, it means there is something end routine already defined. So before going to write the code, we need to understand a bit more about this uh, structure. Okay, remember the end routine uh, means when exactly end routine will be executed. You, need, you must know the sequence of it. Whenever you execute a DTP, what is the functionality of DTP to transfer data from source to target? So let's say ADS for one is my source and my target is ADS for two. So when it is moving data from source to target, it is not just like, you know, moving it. It is following through sequence of steps. What is it? First, it has to fetch the data and then so when it is fetching data, so it with the data, whatever it is fetched, it is in the source. Uh, format means uh, source structure we can say so what, when it is fetching data from the source definitely the structure the means uh, data stores in an internal table within the logic uh, buffer side the data is in the source format it means uh, uh, sap is fetching data of seven columns information and it is storing in the one package so we call it as a source package that source package you can find in the start routine and after the fetching information and storing into the source package, what next SAP is doing? Each record it fetched from the source, it is converting them into the target format. Target is nothing but how, how many columns are there? 11 columns are there. On source, I have seven columns. On source side, I have seven columns. And target side, I have 11 columns right so the un unmapped unmapped columns system fill with null means zero if it is key figure zero if it is a characteristic field null it will fill with null okay but at the end each record in the source is converted into target format 
okay once all the records in the source for example source i have uh, 100 records are there these 100 records from source structure will be converted to 100 records of target structure okay so then the, uh, once the data convert into target structure it will be stored under result underscore package okay so this is the one of the internal table which is the uh, sap defined within this transformation logic all the data in the target structure converted target structure will be stored in the result package now in the end routine if i go to end routine in the end routine if i a little bit scroll up you can see that this is our target structure okay the target structure name sap is giving us underscore tys underscore s means here structure and t means here um, table okay and finally based upon this structure you see here there is a uh, result package sap defined one result package of you know uh, this table type and then we are going to use it now so in the, in the end routine once sap fetched data successfully from the source and converted to target structure so now the data is finally the result package if this result package contains some information then only it is meaningful to derive the extra columns for example um, this is my target structure for example okay in this target structure i have document number date material quantity i'm oh, sorry quantity unit okay and uh, extra fields are there net price currency amount and currency these are my target structure so if my target internal table so once data came into target structure target table means i may have at least around records thousand one thousand two thousand three like that okay so like this if i am having records here then these records will fill data till this point these four columns always null because there was there is no mapping now my requirement is to de derive information for these four columns for example if this uh, result package doesn't contain any data then there is no meaning to implement code you know to uh, to fill these four columns if it contains data then only there is a meaning to update you know um, information for the four columns so this particular check will be happened using the if statement if result package and this square brackets which i am giving now is used to um, mention if internal table so result underscore package after the square brackets represents the tabular format okay is not initial and if so if result package contains data then go further okay or else simply come out of this uh, logic and uh, you know um, show zero records update the target no if result package contains data then what is my next target so for each record in my, for each material that is coming from my source i need to identify corresponding price information from the material mass data so it means i need to fetch some information from the material mass data for that i need to write a one select statement after writing select statement i need to or store that information in one of the internal table okay so to make it simply just because to offer better understanding what i am going to do thousand twenty twenty three zero one zero one and m1 material quantity 10 unit st let's say this is the my record okay this is my record now my requirement is what is my requirement my requirement is to fill the net price information so how i am going to fill my net price i need to take this material information and go to my material master data and check the m1 material here and fetch the corresponding price information and then fill this here so this is the logic that i am going to implement now and then currency what is the currency here inr so that inr also i am going to fetch from the table and i am going to update here but for each record i am going to this table uh, you know every time no so because uh, later i may have m2 record again i need to go to this table check for m2 and then so every time i am to go to the table i need to write a select statement instead of that what i need to do i can create one internal table within my you know end routine so the declaration part always we can perform you know before if statement data lt lt is nothing but a table local table and what is my master data info object this is my master data info object copy lt is type standard table of i am creating this table 
so i am creating a table of uh, you know this type and then i need one work area also um, ls means a local structure work area which holds only one record uh, like line of like line of lt underscore yes not. so i created one internal table and one structure which is of type of material master data now what i am going to write i am going to write a select statement select star from this table material master data table into where into my into table okay into table internal table for all entries in result underscore package where uh, where what was the column name here material is equal to result underscore package material column information so we already learned about for all entries in information and all so whichever materials coming in my result package so for those materials only i am going to fetch information from this middle master data okay so done now uh, so i have the information now available in my internal table so i no need to go to the database table every time so once i selected my data from database table into my internal table now i can use this internal table within my logic now i am going to loop my result package so to update each record in my result package i need to use loop statement and i use result fields field symbol you see this is assigning result fields it is a field symbol which we already learned about field symbol concept this field symbol was given defined by sap so we are not creating this one we can use this field symbol given by sap here and now using this loop statement and field symbol i am going to update my net price and the currency document currency so from where i can read my net price information by reading this internal table lt underscore you know like that into ls underscore into structure ls underscore with the key with the key uh, what was the key here so material so in the master info object this uh, gsn material matner is equal to result fields material okay so if psi sub rc equal to zero and if it means what is this read statement is reading data from my internal table for the material of each record because loop executes for each record so for first record what was the material corresponding you know uh, record information will be available in my work area now i am updating my net price information result fields net price equal to ls from work area work area always holds single record from work area i am taking the price information okay similarly i need to update my uh, document currency also document currency is equal to ls matter here i have currency column from the currency column i am updating this currency information that's it so i am successfully updated my net price information and document currency information uh, in my uh, means uh, i am done with updating these two columns okay so what are the leftover columns amount and currency so how to how to derive currency so once net price was derived successfully so net price is derived using so result fields hyphen amount is equal to quantity so i need to take you know quantity from the record result fields quantity into net price which gives the value of my quantity total quantity and similarly amount was uh, an interacted you know linked with the currency column so currency is equal to so it is nothing but my document currency okay that's it so this is how we need to write our n routine
So if we click on check button, yeah, all correct. So for each record in my result package, it means for each record in my result package, I am deriving these four columns information within this loop information, within this loop statement. Now save it. Because I am using field symbols, I am directly updating the internal table. So we already learned this in our previous concepts. Save it, activate it. Now, you know, right click here, create DTP. Click on OK button. Activate. Go to execute. Yes. And then go to administrator. Environment. Inbound table. Execute. You see now the net price was updated and the amount also updated and currency document currency are updated. So we are successfully able to derive the four records using the end routine. Okay.